Hi folks, Chris Schmidt, QS Makers. I've had this concept in my head now for a while of a console table with really fine, delicate lines, but that's made out of kind of industrial, rough looking materials. Tube steel and rough sawn, salvaged lumber. Kind of an industrial, modern farmhouse look. So the other day I happened to be in my lumber pile and came across a piece of rough sawn ash. It wasn't wide enough for the tabletop, but I've been wanting to do an epoxy resin project as well, so I thought it could work. Then I found a pile of tube steel stashed behind the wood and I felt like the universe was speaking to me. So I went to some old sketchbooks and found some designs I'd sketched with proportions I thought would look good for this project and headed back out to the shop to start preparing the wood. Now this ash came from a 150 year old tree in Wisconsin that was killed by emerald ash borers. Most of the tree had already been used building a kitchen, stairway and other furniture. But this piece was warped and had been badly eaten by the bugs, which was actually perfect for this project. My first task was to get rid of the bark and expose those bug trails. Then I cut it into two roughly even pieces. To flatten out one side of each piece, I mounted the piece on a sled and put shims under it to stabilize it and keep it from rocking, then ran it through the planer. Next I needed to make a custom container to hold the wooden epoxy, so I cut up some scraps of plywood. I lined the frame with tape so the epoxy wouldn't stick. Then I used caulk in the corners to seal it. There's a link to the tape, the epoxy, and the color dye I used in the video description. I clamped the two pieces into the frame, leveled the frame, and then calculated how much resin I would need. I mixed up two batches and added green powder to one and blue powder to the other, adding just enough to make the resin opaque. I filled the resin in the wood just shy of level with the top of the wood. And then when it was mostly dry, and I did this off camera, I mixed up two more batches with just a little powder so it would be mostly transparent. And in the end, this added some real visual depth. After I let it cure for a couple of days, I was able to take it back out of the frame and run the top through the planer to really get it smooth and level with the wood. And because the planing really scuffs up the resin, I sanded it up to 800 grit. I trimmed off the sides and the ends and then gave it a couple of coats of polyurethane and the top was finished. Well the top is done and I am super stoked about how it turned out. The only thing left to do now is make the base frame, weld that up, so let's get started on that right away. Each of the metal pieces has to be cut to a precise length and while this little saw is great at cutting through metal, its laser line, to quote Roger Daltrey, is pretty crappy. So I've taped a piece of scrap wood to the surface and scored a line where the blade will cut. Then I mark the end of the cut line in the wood which denotes the longest corner of the metal. So just line it up and cut. Awesome, the frame is done and it looks fantastic. It just needs a coat of paint. Or so I thought, or so I thought, until I put the base on the floor and put the top on it. The balance was all wrong. The thin top was just overpowered by the mass of the base. So reluctantly, I cut it apart and rebuilt it six inches shorter. It was a total pain in the butt and I was ticked off the entire time, but it was so worth it. In the end, I love the dimensions. I love the proportions. I love how it all turned out. 
Before we do the big reveal, I just want to say thanks for watching, and if you liked or were inspired by the video, please do us a favor and give it a like. Also, don't forget about the subscribe button and the little notify button next to it. Thanks again for watching everyone, Chris Schmidt signing out from Key West.